Before we were talking about examples where we neglected air resistance. Remember, if we didn't consider air resistance, then that meant that, uh, well, the objects would have the same acceleration, and it also meant that, you know, the mass wouldn't really matter, and neither would the shape of the object. But what we, happen, what we have then is in situations where we do consider air resistance, uh, then it's a different story altogether. Now, air resistance is actually quite complicated. Okay, it's actually, um, with just high school physics, it's very difficult to quantify what really happens. It turns out it's a differential equation and it depends on a few things. But we can still talk about it quantitatively instead of doing it qualitatively. Uh, whoops, the other way around. We'll do it qualitatively instead of quantitative. That's what I mean. So air resistance. What happens with it? Well, it's a bit more complicated. It depends on many factors. So let's see here. So what does it depend on? It depends on, well, first of all, the, um, well, lots of things. Number one, the speed of the object. It turns out the faster an object is going, the more air resistance there will be. So that gets complicated because air resistance acts to slow the object down, but the slower it goes, the less it acts. And then the slower it goes, the less it acts. Whereas, you know, the greater it goes, the greater it acts. The greater it goes, the greater it acts. So it's a really complicated sort of thing here. It also depends on the surface area of the object. That's a big one. So surface area of the object. So for example, a feather, um, you know, has a big surface area compared to, you know, its well, relative size. So it's, it's actually got lots of surface area. So that means that if it falls, well, we'll talk about this terminal velocity in a second, but basically depending on the shape of the object, it turns out that air resistance will affect it differently. So air resistance depends on a lot of other things, like the density of the air and the pressure and all sorts of things. But these are the main two things we're going to be considering. So let's consider, um, yeah, so maybe let's just say this. So it increases, maybe we'll just write this down. So air resistance, whoops, air resistance. We're just going to make sure we know this. So it increases. as an object goes faster. Okay, so that's, that's important. So this is the whole thing about the speed of an object. I just want to make sure we sort of write this down. So as an object goes faster, air resistance increases. That's a good fact to know. And another thing, well, maybe we'll look at something like in a, an example of a free fall parachute jump, let's say. So maybe just a free fall skydiver, let's say. So if you jump out of a plane in real situation, so here, see, we are considering air resistance. We're not just going to say neglect it because if you jumped out of a plane, well, let's see, this is you here. Let's see, this is you and you're falling through the air. You've just, you know, whew, this is you. You just jumped out of a plane. So you're falling through the air. Now let's look at what really happens with your speed versus time. So this here, this is your speed versus time. Well, initially, of course, your speed is going to increase. That's because you're still accelerating. So as you accelerate, of course, your speed will increase. But the thing is, it will eventually reach some constant value. So your speed might do something like this, or this right here is some sort of dotted line here. This is, you know, your, your graph right here. Well, I did a really bad job of drawing this dotted line here. But let's just assume then. So it's going to be some sort of straight dotted line that your graph never quite reaches. And what's going to happen then is this. Um, well, we can look at the forces acting on you. Um, at some point though, I mean, you've always got this downwards gravitational force. So FG, I'm gonna say. So force gravitational going down. If you only had this, you would keep accelerating. And that means that your speed would keep increasing and increasing. And that means then that your graph would actually do the opposite shape. It would actually do something like this. In other words, your speed would keep increasing as you went down. But with air resistance, what happens is this little vector, let's say, so we drew a little arrow right here. Let's say this arrow went up. Well, initially, as you're going uh, really fast, you know, there'd be lots of air resistance. Well, sorry, as you're slow, there'd be no air resistance. And as you increase your speed, you'd have like a, just imagine a little upwards arrow here that would just grow. And it would grow and grow and grow in length until it's equal to the gravitational force. So this right here would be the you know, force due to air. 
That would be your air resistance force. Now, it turns out, like I said, it's a bit complicated. It won't grow bigger than it because that would mean you'd actually stop in the air and you'd actually end up going up. So that's not allowed. So it turns out as these two, though, as this downwards gravitational force is going to eventually be the same as the upwards air resistance force, that means then that you'll no longer be accelerating. As it turns out, acceleration is all about the net force. So here the force, the downwards force, is going to be equal to and opposite to the upwards force. Now it doesn't mean you stop moving, it just means you stop accelerating. And if you're not accelerating, it means you're either still, which means either V is zero or V is constant. And in this case, notice right here, this is what happens. So at this very special time right here, this right here is where we're going to say then that uh, terminal velocity. So that's going to be you know, the maximum speed you reach. So if you're the skydiver, that would be the maximum speed you reach. And that's because the acceleration is going to be zero. And the reason is because the gravitational force is equal to the air resistance force. So at this point, when this upwards arrow is the same length as the downwards arrow here, then you could say that you're no longer accelerating and that means you're going at a constant speed. And that maximum speed you reach, we call that V, well, sometimes we call it VT for terminal. So VT, that'll be the terminal velocity. That's as fast as you can go. So that's something important with air resistance. Now we can also consider something else. Um, we can consider, well, first of all, what a parachute does. Because it turns out if you're laying like this right here, you're going to have a certain terminal velocity. But it turns out, depending on your surface area, you can change your terminal velocity. So what this means is that at some point, obviously, you're going to be not falling any faster. You're going to be going a constant speed, still straight down. And if you hit the ground at that speed, you'll probably go splat. You don't want that. So what happens then is you can do a number of things. I mean, you can decrease your surface area. You might have seen people do this in movies. They can actually um, point themselves straight up and down. If you do that, you have less surface area compared to the air that's sort of running into you. Because of that, you'll increase your terminal velocity, which means you can actually go down faster. I remember seeing a really cool video about uh, peregrine falcons, these type of birds, and they can go down super fast. And the reason is because they can make their surface area really small. They can sort of tuck their wings way back, and so they're basically like a tiny little arrow just going straight down. So that's why they can increase their terminal velocity. Well, to a certain amount, of course, because they still have surface area. Well, you probably don't want to go faster when you hit the ground. You probably want to go slower. So what do you do? Well, hopefully you carry a parachute with you, right? So maybe you strap a little parachute to your back. And this parachute, what happens when you sort of let it go? It increases your surface area. So maybe that's a nice little fact to learn. So a parachute, what it does, it just increases your surface area by a lot. All of a sudden, your surface area is huge. Now it's, you know, many, many meters squared. So because of that, it lowers your terminal velocity. So if it lowers your terminal velocity, that means you know the speed that you'll be going, because you'll still reach terminal velocity, it's just that your terminal velocity will be less. That means you can hit the ground and hopefully not break your legs and everything. So it all depends on the size of your parachute and a lot of other things. Remember, it also depends on the density of air. So you probably don't want to try landing with a parachute on Mount Everest with a regular sized parachute because there's so much less density of air that your terminal velocity is still going to be quite fast. You probably want a larger surface area parachute, maybe an extra big one. Then you might actually land on Everest without breaking your legs. So that's what happens with this. We can also take a look at a graph of just something going in two dimensions. So let's just say I have something that's launched and let's say it would normally do this path. Let's say this would be time and this might be, you know, the, its height or something like that. If I launch something in a parabolic arch like this, let's say I threw a rock off a cliff and I went wee like this. Well, I threw it up, I guess, at an angle. It would do this path. Well, Considering air resistance, what would this look like? It would do something like this. So it would start, but it would actually go less high and it would actually land sooner. That's what air resistance really does, because it actually slows this thing down. 
So this one right here, that would be considering air resistance. So the blue graph that showed without considering air resistance, but the red one would show what its path really would be if we had air resistance, which is realistic. So it takes what should theoretically be a nice perfect arch and it sort of squishes it a little bit and it lowers it a little bit. So air resistance has very big effects to us in our everyday lives. Um, not only if you're, you know, I mean, obviously if you're driving a car, you want to reduce your surface area. And that's why, you know, fast cars are very low and very tiny compared to, you know, the air hitting them. So you want it to have a very low surface area. It's more complicated than that, of course. You have aerodynamics and how the air actually flows around your object. But this is the main idea behind it. Air resistance slows things down, it depends on its speed and the surface area. So that's why you have a parachute to make yourself have a big surface area, because that will decrease your terminal velocity.